Today I'm going to show you how to install a Wolf spring kit in a Taurus 85. This will be the same process for the Taurus 605, uh, most of the 38 Special and 357 Magnum revolvers. Um, they all <clears throat> function the same for the most part inside. Uh, a lot of the Smith & Wessons are going to be similar, uh, but I'll show you how to do it on this Taurus here. So the factory pull uh, on the single action is three and a half pounds, and the on the uh, in the double action pull is uh, somewhere around twelve or maybe higher than that, depending on the model that you have. Um, so we're going to replace the springs and uh, make this thing a little bit easier to shoot. The double action doesn't feel too awful. It's really pretty smooth, um, but it is pretty heavy. For carry, it's not bad, but if you're going to go out and shoot at the range, your hand's going to get tired pretty quick. Um, the kit that we have here is, there you go, hope there's a part number on there at the top, tells you what you need to get. It's less than 20 bucks. I think it's uh, 12 or $15. And we've got reduced power hammer uh, and trigger springs. There's a couple different ones in here. Um, and we're going to have to modify uh, the trigger spring because in the newer models, like this one, this ultralight here, this is a 2017 model, um, the springs are just a little bit smaller. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, to take these things apart on the new model 85s, we have to drive a pin out here. On the 605s and any model that came with a factory hog grip, there's going to be a flathead screw down there at the bottom. It's nice if you have one of these uh, blocks. If you don't, you know, a bunch of different uh, other ways that you can... Get this thing out, we're going to use a 1 8 punch to get this pin out. There we go. The first time you take it out, it's going to be pretty hard. There we go. Then this grip will just pull off. Nothing's going to fly out, so don't worry. Okay. Got the grip taken off. Don't forget your pin down there. Put that to the side. You can see where that pin goes through. <clears throat> and uh, now we're going to take off this side plate here. You want to use a fine blade, high quality screwdriver. Don't use a cheap screwdriver here. Um, you really don't want to mess these screws up. There's three, two smaller ones here, and then a larger one here. This larger one has a spring behind it. So, uh, just be careful of that when you're taking it apart. Sometimes people find these screws come loose just from shooting. Um, I had one they did come loose on. You know what? Look at that screw. It's got a little bit of stripping there on the head from the factory. I got these revolvers really cheap on uh, around Black Friday. They're about 150 bucks, actually less than that after the mail-in rebate. Super great deal. This this little thing makes a really good carry gun, uh, being lightweight. If you're comfortable with carrying a 38 special uh, plus P, so there is that screw and the detent and spring. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. Alrighty. So taking this plate off, you do not want to pry from the side over here. It's going to be pretty tempting to do that. Uh, best way to do it is hit it on a table like this or hit it on the back side here with a screwdriver. Sometimes these plates are pretty tight but that one was not. Alright so take a look inside here. The two springs that we are going to be replacing are here and here. Trigger spring and the hammer spring. Go ahead and take a good look at the orientation of the strut here. See, so you have a bend here, so when you put it back together, you don't put it in backwards. All right. <clears throat> the next step, um, you want to have a needle or uh, a paper clip. I find that a needle works really well because it fits in these tiny holes. And what we're going to do is pull the hammer back until it locks into place, and there'll be a hole exposed here at the back. We can put the needle in there. And then very carefully hold the hammer and pull the trigger. Slowly let it catch. And it's going to take the tension off of the spring here. So we can pull that sucker out. 
and this is the first spring that we're going to replace. All right, here are our three springs. We have the largest spring, which is the hammer spring, and then two trigger springs. We're going to use this six and a half here. We're going to have to modify that one here in a minute. But let's go ahead and get this thing open and get this put on. This spring is pretty easy. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory on how you get it on there. You just want to be really careful um, when you're compressing the spring and uncompressing the old one um, that you don't lose the spring, of course, and let it fly across the room. So um, put the hammer strut down like this and just push down to release the tension. And there you go. Put the new one back on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put a little bit of oil on here. Um, sometimes you'll feel a little bit of grit when you're pulling the hammer back. And if you've shot the gun already, this one hasn't been fired. If you've shot the gun already, there'll be marks um, on the back of the hammer strut here from where the spring is wearing on it. So if you just put a little bit of oil there, it'll help it wear in a little bit better. We'll dry it off. We don't want too much. Take a look at the two springs. The old one is on the left. The new one with the smaller coils is here on the right. Also, the old one has kind of a green tint to it. Okay. Put this little hat on here. Push it down. Stick the needle in. Bam. There you go. That one's done. So we'll put this thing back in place. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on top of this uh, contact point here that contacts inside the hammer. And then slowly pull the hammer back. While holding this portion here till it sets in place. And you can pull the hammer back the rest of the way. And there you go. Now this part is done. Next thing we're going to do is replace the uh, trigger spring. So we want to pull the hammer back again, and there's going to be a tiny, tiny little hole. See if I can get it on the camera. See that right there? Stick the needle inside there. It may be turned at an angle where it's really hard to get to. That's why a needle comes in handy, because it's pointy. Um, we want to get that started, and then let pull the trigger, slowly let the hammer go back. Take the tension off the spring. Pull it out with pliers on the head here. There we go. See this spring is also uh, color coded. There we go. Take a look at it. So hold this in your hands or with pliers. Depress it and pull that out. So take a look at the way this was from the factory. <clears throat> There's a wrong way to put this back together. There's a little step in a shallower side that's going to go down on the spring. There's a larger hollow side needs to be facing up. So the shallow side kind of matches the spring of where it's going to perch so it's kind of hard to... If you know anything about anything you can probably get it right. Um, the new spring, six and a half pound trigger spring is going to have to be trimmed because it's a little bit too long. The older guns uh, use this longer spring. Um, the coils are a little bit thicker too, so let me show you, give you the measurements on that. I'm not sure how long the factory spring is, uh, but this one we need to cut down to 0 0.727 inches or uh, 15 coils. Actually, you know what? Here's a cut one right here. So that's how much we need to take off of it. You can count the coils or measure it with calipers. You can see the spring is cut. And we're going to fit it back onto the strut here. That's how much I took off.
Okay, there we go. Put a little drop of oil in here too. And on the head, a little ball. And we'll get this thing in place. What you can do is Put the ball into the socket on the trigger here, here in the front, and hold pressure, and slowly pull the hammer back until it lines up into the hole in the frame. All right, so there we go. <clears throat> My hands are kind of cold, so that was a little bit sloppy, but you get the process. <clears throat> Put the ball into the socket on the trigger there, and then uh, get this, and then get this back section pushed in. Now, what you can do if you're working on a different model and you have to trim your spring, but you don't know how much to trim it, once you get it in place like this and you pull the hammer, if you uh, haven't trimmed it enough it'll bind up and you won't be able to get the hammer to lock on the sear so this one is working just fine we'll get this side plate back on and uh, be good to go it's a good idea to put some uh, thread locker on here definitely don't use uh, red because if you ever need to take this thing back apart it can give you some trouble especially in this aluminum so stick with a low strength or medium strength like a blue, and you should be fine. Sometimes these side plates can be a little difficult to get on. You might have to kind of mess with them, but you don't want to force anything to do too hard. It's a really precise fit, uh, but it is aluminum, so you can damage it. So we'll get that thing back into place. There we go. Wait, this detent is going to go back in is just like this. Focus. There we go. So you have this big screw, and if you pull it out, there's a detent with a spring on it. You want it to be just like this. If the spring goes in first and not the detent, uh, you'll mess the spring up. So slide that one back into place. Then the two smaller screws and zip everything down. Remember when you're tightening these screws not to over tighten them because you are going into aluminum. So you can go too tight and mess this thing up and that would be bad. <clears throat> Alrighty. So once that's on, slide your grip back into place. Make sure it's aligned, make sure that hole looks good, and then we can put the pin back in. We're going to put the pin in the opposite direction that we took it apart, so uh, it keeps the best fit and it doesn't wallow out the hole on the other side. Once you use these uh, roll pins too much, they can go bad, but I doubt you're going to have that problem. On something like this, you're not going to be taking it apart that often. Also, the aluminum frame, uh, same thing. If you do it too many times, it could wear out and uh, make you buy a bigger pin. I put a little bit of oil on the outside of the pin because it'll help it go through the rubber grips. Uh, grips can really grab that pin and make it hard to drive through. All right. So just make sure you're even on both sides and you are good to go. Let's go ahead and do a test on this thing and see where it put our, uh, our double action pull at. On the other ones that I've done, it brings it right around eight pounds. So let's see where we're at now. So eight and a half pounds. There we go, there's the eight pound. Yep, and eight again, that is the top of my scale. 
it can go further but uh, we're breaking right around eight pounds it should not change the single action much let's see where we're at which three and a half pounds right before this it should not have changed it eh, three pounds Wow, two and a half. Maybe it did go down a little bit. Two and a half. Heck yeah, so cool. So we lightened up our single action a little bit too. But um, there it is. That's all there is to it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks for watching.